long ago, during a time known as the olden days when justice was a double-edged sword, unsheath not only to maintain order, but to inflict unspeakable horror. Amidst the shadowy dungeons and echoing corridors of the medieval era, the executioner's wheel stood as a malevolent sentinel, waiting eagerly to claim its victims. As the wheel of fate turned with grim determination, the condemned faced their final torturous reckoning. With each turn of the wheel, limbs shattered like fragile porcelain, leaving flesh asunder and the condemned writhing in a harrowing dance of suffering. It's a tale of a grim execution called Breaking on the Wheel, a story that transcends time and borders, revealing the depths to which humanity can descend. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The Holy Roman Wheel During the early 16th and 18th century, the grim method of breaking on the wheel was prominent in Germany's justice system. Yet, the origins of this brutal practice can be traced back even further to the era of the Frankish Empire which existed between 440 and 500 BC. The writing of Gregory of Tours, a 6th century author, described a similar punishment of a criminal placed on a deep track with a heavily loaded wagon passed over the individual, bearing a striking resemblance to the execution method of breaking on the wheel. However, in 15th century Zurich, the Blood Court Procedure document known as the Zuckerblutnextronen, detailed the process involved in breaking on the wheel. Firstly, the condemned individual would be positioned face down with bound hands and feet on a board. They would then be dragged to the place of execution by a horse. The wheel would strike each arm twice, once above the elbow and once below when wielded with force. The same treatment would have applied to each leg, hitting above and below the knees. The final ninth blow was reserved for the middle of the spine, aimed to shatter it. Subsequently, the broken body would be interwoven into the wheel, wedged between the spokes. The executioner would then hammer the wheel onto a pole, which in turn was firmly planted upright in the ground. The criminal would languish in this state, clinging to life as they were left to rot, an ominous and lingering fate. However, there were other variations of this punishment as well. Some involved the tying condemned individual to a large wooden wheel and pushing it down a rocky hillside. In other cases, the victim would be attached to a wheel and swung over a fire or metal spikes that pierced their body. In certain instances, such as in France, the executioner was instructed to deliver a final blow known as the coupe de grace, meaning blows of mercy targeting the neck or heart after the initial phase. Following the torture, the victim's mangled body might be displayed on the wheel, heightening the impact of the gruesome scene. According to the beliefs of that era, leaving the body on the wheel after execution exposed to scavenging animals, birds, and decay served as a sacred purpose beyond death and impeded the transition from death to resurrection. And if, by some extraordinary circumstance, the condemned person survived the ordeal or the execution failed, such as the wheel breaking or falling from its position, it would be interpreted as an act of divine intervention. However, in the Holy Roman Empire, the breaking on the wheel was a mirror punishment for highwaymen and street thieves. At the same time, the Saxon Spiegel Legal Code dictated its use for cases of murder and fatal arson. 
those deemed more wicked with aggravated murder were wheeled bottom up, beginning with the legs and sometimes lasting for hours. The court sentence would specify the number and order of blows to be administered. Also, in the Habsburg Empire, at the end of the revolt of the Horea in 1785, Kloska and Krasan, two revolt leaders, were sentenced to be executed by the breaking wheel. In a book published by Adam F. Geisler in 1785, the two leaders were said to have been broken von Unten off from bottom up, meaning the lower limbs were broken before the upper limbs, prolonging the torture. In other cities of Germany, such as in the Middle Ages Prussia, the Prussian Penal Code adopted breaking on the wheel as capital punishment for heinous crimes. However, in Prussia, the punishment for breaking on the wheel took a different approach than in other places, as it followed a peculiar ritual before breaking the limbs of the condemned criminal. The ritual included a royal decree that commanded the executioner to strangle the individual, ensuring their demise before their subsequent torturous act. Whereas in the county of Tecklenburg, there was another specific manner of this execution known as von Oben Harab, reported to have been used on the 1st of October, 1786, to execute Heinrich Dole, a man who was condemned and accused of the aggravated murder of a Jew. The von Oben Harab meant that the initial blow of the wheel would aim to crush his chest, an act presumed to bring instantaneous death. However, there was an additional twist to this dark tale. The executioner, Ezemeyer, who the court had discreetly instructed to strangle Dole before the first stroke of the wheel secretly, was to have said to have made a grave mistake as Dole had survived the ordeal. According to bystanders, Dole had been alive throughout the proceedings, even after Ezemeyer had secured him on the wheel and raised it onto a pole. Compelled to investigate whether their worst fears were valid, a town physician climbed the execution stage. On getting there, to his dismay, Dole was alive, although in excruciating pain. However, six hours later, Dole succumbed to his injuries and died. The incompetence and alleged cruelty displayed by Ezemeyer and his son were speculated to be deliberate acts of cruelty. It was widely believed that his motive stemmed from Dole's recent conversion from Catholicism to the Reformed Church. This shift conflicted Ezemeyer's devout Catholic beliefs. Despite these suspicions, the court did not find sufficient evidence to prove deliberate malice on Ezemeyer's part. Nevertheless, he was charged with malpractice and it was revealed that the string around Doe's neck had not even been tightened properly. Furthermore, Ezemeyer disregarded his duty as an executioner by accepting a wheel that lacked the necessary weight for a successful execution. The inadequacy of the wheel prevented Doe's chest from being crushed as intended. Additionally, one of his arms and legs had not been broken according to the established disciplinary procedures. Also, the nail driven into Dole's brain to secure him to the wheel was hammered in too low. So, he received a sentence of two years of hard labor and was permanently banned from ever practicing as an executioner again. In a gracious gesture, his young son was acquitted of any wrongdoing. However, during the 19th century of Germany, the punishment became viewed as vile and inhumane. It was abolished in Bavaria in 1813, in Hesse in 1836, and later in Prussia in 1841 after the execution of Rudolf Knapfell. A young man named Rudolf Knapfell fell victim to this torturous execution method after committing a heinous crime by robbing and killing a bishop in Prussia on the 13th of August, 1841. The Sweden Wheel
This harsh punishment also found its way to Sweden, as there lies a famous tale of a young man named Johan Pakul, who was unfortunately destined to face the terrifying fate of being executed by the wheel. Johan Pakul was a Livonian gentleman accused of treason during Swedish King Charles XII's reign of 1707. Hence, Pakul was doomed to a sealed fate. His consequences were gruesome and haunting. According to his close friend, priest Lawrence Hagen, who witnessed the horrifying ordeal that awaited Pakul while being broken on the wheel. When the executioner approached Pakul, the air was heavy with dread. With the first strike, Pakul's agonizing cries pierced the silence, echoing in the hearts of those who bore witness. Oh Jesus, Jesus have mercy upon me, he pleaded, his desperate pleas resonating through the chilling scene. The unfolding events seemed to stretch endlessly, with each blow inflicted upon Pakul, causing him immeasurable suffering. With each strike, a symphony of anguished groans and fervent invocations to the Almighty intertwined. The torment persisted, leaving Pecule to endure more than 15 strikes, each adding to his unimaginable suffering. Yet, in an unforeseen twist, after two savage blows to the breast, Pecule's strength waned, and his voice faded into a faltering, dying whisper. Cut off my head. He managed to utter, his words barely audible. Reluctant to hasten the inevitable, the executioner hesitated, prolonging the gruesome tableau. Even in his final moments, Pecul, driven by an indomitable will, took matters into his own hands. With little strength, he positioned his head upon the scaffold. And so, with four decisive strikes of the hatchet, the separation of his head from body was finally accomplished followed by the executioner's terrible act of quartering his lifeless remains. According to the chronicles in the medieval hagiographies, St. Catherine of Alexandria was condemned to a gruesome execution on a device that would later bear her name, the Catherine Wheel, for refusing to renounce her Christian faith. Legend has it that something miraculous occurred as St. Catherine was about to face her dreadful fate. As she touched the wheel, it inexplicably broke apart, defying the expectations of all who witnessed the event. Undeterred by this unexpected turn, her captors carried out their sentence by beheading her, ending her earthly life. Depictions of St. Catherine often portray her with a small, broken wheel signifying the miraculous incident. Sometimes she is depicted holding a miniature version of the wheel in her hand, while the sword that brought about her demise is also frequently included in the artistic renditions. If you liked our video, let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and remember to hit that subscribe button. Until we come your way again next time with an insane story, bye for now.